Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Horn Call podcast. My name is James Bold, and I'm the publications editor for the International Horn Society and your host. I'm uh, recording this intro from the road today with uh, – it's not a bad mic setup. It's not the same one I have at uh, at home, uh, but I think it'll be okay for today. So anyway, if you hear <laughs> if you hear some difference in the audio, uh, that's probably the cause. Uh, at any rate, I'm delighted to share a conversation today with – with you with Domi Hutinen from Finland. He's a member of the Finnish Radio Orchestra, and uh, until recently, he was a member of the IHS Advisory Council. I kind of uh, messed up a little bit uh, uh, when I introduced him on the on the recording. I mentioned that he was a current member of the IHS Advisory, Advisory Council, but uh, I was mistaken. He rotated off that in 2023. But nevertheless, we had a really fascinating talk about uh, growing up in Finland and the uh, uh, process of becoming a, a professional horn player and a very active musician uh, in orchestras and uh, in chamber music and all kinds of things. Um, uh, he's just a really fun person to talk to, and I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation with Tommy Hutten. Thanks again for uh, taking some time out of your day to, to talk. And maybe for those who aren't uh, as familiar with you, could you tell us uh, what your current performing and teaching positions are? And of course, you're a member of the Advisory Council of the IHS. So if uh, folks don't know Tommy, um, uh, he's a member of the governing body of the International Horn Society, but you're also a very active performer and teacher in uh, in Finland. Yeah, so I'm, I'm working in the Finnish Radio Symphony Orchestra in Helsinki. And then also I'm, I'm teaching uh, horn and natural horn at the Sibelius Academy, in also in Helsinki. And then one of the also, um, so those are the main things, but then also I'm a member of Finnish Baroque Orchestra. So I'm also often playing uh, natural horn and baroque horn with a it's kind of the main period orchestra in, in Finland. Okay, excellent. Um, and it's uh, for me, it's always interesting to to chat with people from outside the United States about sort of their training and the musical system and how they were brought up. Uh, when when did you start playing the horn? Uh, I was about eight years old. So there's there's a um, strong music institute system in in uh, in Finland. So we, mm -hmm. so I come from the Finland is fairly big country, and and I come from the middle part of in the from the west coast, from a small town there, and and there there was very strong uh, wind orchestra tradition mm -hmm. there. So I, I, that's I think that's why from that small city they have have, have become many many professional brass players and very many horn players also. So I, I started eight years old. My parents asked if I would like to play something. And for some reason, I, I said that's trumpets. I didn't have any idea why, but or I don't know why. But then then in the in the audition for the Music Institute, the, the brass, brass pedagogues, the, for, but summary, I think there was three spots in the in the horn class. So then okay. they gave, gave me French horn to my hands, and I, of course, I mean, I'm happy that I <laughs> that I became horn player, not a trumpet player. So yeah, and so that even from that early age, you kind of uh, you you do you take formal training on the instrument all the way through, like teenage years and that sort of thing as well. Yeah, yeah, we. I started some some at, at that time in the eighties. Some some uh, students started with like tenor horn or something, but I started straight away with with French horn, mm -hmm. and quite early uh, straight to to the wind orchestra and kind of different levels. And I think actually the so I had weekly lessons with a mm -hmm. teacher, and I think. That's the wind orchestra social circles and and gigs that helped to carry the the hobby 
through the through the Chinu AGS. So okay, I think that's helped a lot. Yeah, that's excellent. What what amazing training that must have been when you you got to you know eighteen nineteen years old. Is that generally when uh, people start going to higher education, going to college in Finland? Yeah, yeah. We usually we do our like like our high school ends mm-hmm. about eighteen or nineteen, and then 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 I applied to civil academy and and luckily got in and started my my professional studies. There there's a, actually in civil academy a youth department also. And I was for for the last year, so from sixteen years old, I, I was uh, I got into to the youth department. So I, I started to come. With a train, six hours, I came to les- take lessons in Helsinki. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I was in high, high school, yeah. I started early in the morning, and then I had long lesson in the day, and then evening back. back. Okay. So, it, but, but it was very good experience mm-hmm. because I, I was kind of didn't know about the music world at all. So it was kind of everything was very new at that time. So. Yeah. It, well, and it occurs to me, I know with a lot of, my college students who are music students the the path to become from becoming a student to becoming a professional is often unclear for them they're not sure well okay if i go to college and uh, you know major in music what what do i do after that you know and and sometimes yeah. it's 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 not easy for them to navigate how to get from the student level to the professional level how does that work in in finland is there a a path for you know getting getting a professional yeah. job uh, yeah, maybe now nowadays it's more clear, so there's more information. But mm-hmm. when when I was at that time, I, it was actually funny funny that my teacher in in Kokkola in the small town asked that if I would like to apply to civil academy, and I I said sure. What what is it? What's the place? So I didn't know anything about it, and and I have no musicians in in my family or relatives, so I. I had no idea, but then it, when it kind of the geeks started to come and and the mm-hmm. music life and the social circles, so it kind of drew me to, and it, then it was quite quite clear mm-hmm. when 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 I applied to become a professional uh, professional studies, it was clear that I, I want to become a musician, mm-hmm. and then of course it's then then. Then it's fairly clear that then, when you are studying, there's only one university in in, in Finland. So mm-hmm. then, and and then, there's actually quite many orchestras, and, okay. and so it's so there 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 is work, and there's kind of and there's so it's in that way it's it's kind of clear clear mm-hmm. path, of course. Yeah. yeah. So while you were at the Sibelius Academy, were you, uh, you said gigs, were you substituting with orchestras and playing extra around town? Yeah. Especially at that time, there, there was lots of gigs. And, uh, mm-hmm. and in my, in my hometown in Kokkola, there's a very good and famous, uh, string orchestra and they, uh-huh. they need also, they need often like Mozart type two horns and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I started to play gigs there when I was 16 or something. So. Okay. So, but around Helsinki also, at that time when I was studying, there were a lot of gigs. Now, now nowadays it's, of course, it's it's not so easy to get gigs anymore. But it's it was so I I got a lot of. Usually we were much more doing gigs than than in school, which wasn't. Mm-hmm. Or, the teachers always didn't like that, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That yeah, that's a difficult balance to strike balancing your academic and school work with the job you ultimately want to do and and get paid for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And of course you you learn in the gigs but then yeah. Of course you would learn also in the school so so it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's all, all about balancing, yeah. I remember in my uh in graduate school turning turning down some orchestra gigs because I needed to study more or practice more and now thinking back on it oh that was so stupid I should have <laughs> I should have taken the taken the work uh, and figured it yeah. out but I remember thinking I don't I don't know if I'll have time to do what I need to do to be successful in these classes and then also you know go to go to rehearsal every night for <laughs> for things Yeah. But, yeah, but that's that's why I saw so 
and, and courageous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember someone yeah. asking, why, why'd you turn that down? Why didn't you, why didn't you take that gig? But yeah, I guess everybody mm. has to figure it out for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and you're also, on the gigs also. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, well, I guess, let, um, so uh, for people who may not know, there's, there's this long tradition of great Finnish horn players and just a tradition of horn playing in Scandinavia. So who, who were your inspirations and role models when you were coming up? Obviously, I imagine teachers at the, at the academy and then in the local orchestras, but you know, um, who who were the horn players that you looked up to that you really kind of uh, maybe idolized or wanted to to fashion your careers after? In Finland, uh, it was like my my former colleague who just retired uh, a while ago, uh, Esa Tukia, who who was the solo horn of Finnish Radio Symphony Orchestra, mm-hmm. and at that time when I was young and and studied, and he also did some gigs in my hometown so he i got to know him from there and, and he yeah he was a great player also nice nice guy and also good kind of socially uh mm-hmm. very skilled so he he was uh yeah he him i listened a lot and and, and tried to copy what he does and mm-hmm. of course I, I had a good teacher in stables academy Kalervo Kulmala, who who was uh, when I was young who was an important figure in in helping to learn learn the technique and and mm-hmm. but then yeah there there has been like uh, the honorary member of IHS uh Holger Franzmann who was mm-hmm. he, he was the kind of the father figure of, of Finnish horn tradition from mm. from the middle of the 20th century so he he taught my teachers and he was his kind of the main mm-hmm. figure there so he's because he i didn't get any le- lessons from him he, he was already quite old then mm-hmm. when i moved to helsinki but mm-hmm. yeah those kind of players then then it just been more more like listening of course, my uh, I studied with Radon of and he uh-huh. he was he's someone that I've listened to a lot, and it was actually quite a uh, quite a. I was very happy that later in my studies I got to got to uh, study with him also because he he had been my idol for for many years. So. Yeah. yeah, such such a such a beautiful, I guess, perfect sound. If you think of a, you know, <laughs> what the model mm, sound for yeah. horn would be. Well, what what were those lessons like? Did you play solo pieces or excerpts or both? Yeah, I was kind of. Uh, I had already graduated from from Helsinki, so mm-hmm. I, just kind of postgraduate studies. So I I played o- only only solo pieces. So uh-huh. so a lot of rep- repertoire through and and and. We had that year. We had actually. He was quite much in Salzburg, and, and we we had a weekly lessons. And I, I tried to prepare as as. And actually, it was nice because I was. Uh, I had only the lessons, nothing else. So I was just mm-hmm. practicing and going. So it was great year for for development. So I, I was preparing as as much solo mm-hmm. repertoire as possible, and then playing for him. So yeah, very and he was. Very inspiring and and, and supporting. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, was is he a demanding teacher? Would he play much in lessons or just kind of talk musical ideas? I I I, I of course know him, but I don't know much about his teaching at all. Yeah, uh, he was concentrating a lot to to music and mm-hmm. and and to the history of the pieces and 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 not demanding. In a way, no, but more, more kind of supporting, and and mm-hmm. and then now and then he showed how he would play it, and of course it was, oh well, yeah, great, yeah, inspirational, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's excellent. So, um, how how does the audition process work in in Finland? Like it to you know, did they advertise a vacancy in the orchestra for solo horn or second horn or something like that? Yeah, it, yeah. They they when this position open, it's it's uh, it's straight away kind of internationally open. So no, mm-hmm. nothing, 
nothing kind of not closed audition mm-hmm. at all. So so open audition and and maybe a couple of months earlier, some some orchestras half half a year earlier, mm-hmm. and uh, and usually usually uh, everybody is is uh, invited to the audition. Of course, nowadays it depends a bit on the how many applications there are, but usually everybody's uh, invited, mm-hmm. and then mm, and then yeah, we we have the system at the moment that is it's the morning of the audition. There's lottery of the uh-huh. the playing order, and then then it's all about kind of waiting for right on on turn, turn and then playing and then. Then a couple of rounds, right. one or two days. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the basic. way it is in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then quite basic repertoire, Morton and Strauss and. and mm-hmm. For the, the orchestra. And then, yeah. 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 And Noeling Bagatelle usually for Loho. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So maybe in the orchestra, except the. Is usually might be something from from for example Sibelius or mm-hmm. maybe from mod, modern composers Lindbergh or mm-hmm. Magnus Lindbergh something so might be something special Finnish music there also. Okay, yeah, that would that's good to know if you're not from Finland and you're auditioning for <laughs> a Finnish orchestra just yeah. to, to brush up on those pieces. Yeah, because C- Sibelius, I mean the the usually the how the music's written. Uh, there might be, I mean, how it's played and how how the music kind of goes. You really know have to know the the symphony. You have not have to know how it sounds mm-hmm. because the sometimes it's yeah very different how how the notation is. So right. Well, and I know you know it, it's not so much uh, a rule, but I know in Germany there's the Alexander 103 is kind of uh, an instrument that a lot of people play professionally in Germany. I guess I'll leave it at that. It's not necessarily a, um, you don't have to play that instrument to get work in Germany, but it certainly seems to be something a lot of players there. uh, (laughs) That's the instrument of choice for many of them. Is that, is that something in Finland as well? Or there, is it more open in terms of equipment? Uh, It's, it's more open. I mean, in, in my section in in RS, uh, we almost all play uh, 103, mm-hmm. but it isn't required. And mm-hmm. there's also Klaus Fair in, uh, mm-hmm. in our section. And it's uh, so it's yeah. And and there's there's lots of Dürk like uh-huh. 103 copies, right? Right. Also in some orchestras, but then then some there's. If you think about different orchestras, there's somebody's playing with Paxman and, and sure, yeah, yeah, and then also yeah, in some orchestras, I, I know that people are playing with American horns, so they're like con or so it's it's more and Holton, of course. When I was my first horn was Holton. Oh really? It, actually, yeah. yes, and it was, uh, and I know in in the. 80s it was mm-hmm. very popular popular horn in in finland so it was lot lot played and do you of think course, that's, Tuck, well i was going to say maybe played. the influence of tuckwell yeah. or farkas uh because they both yeah. had instruments from holton yeah so yeah it's more open and i, I and also the our because our uh horn school the as i mentioned holger franzman he studied in the 30s he studied in Vienna, okay. with with Karl Stiegler, and he, uh-huh. so and he brought the the exercises and sound ideal actually from from Vienna. Oh, interesting! To, and started to teach that teach that in. So our, of course nowadays, of course the German influence of of German uh, horn culture is also strong in Finland, but mm-hmm. still we we are a little bit there's a little bit of of combination of, of so so so-called finnish sound is much darker and it's there's oh. maybe something viennese there maybe also some something american i don't know so it's kind of mixture it's not so bright as as in germany sound mm-hmm. so no that is so well that's that's interesting and it's good to hear i mean i'm one of those that sort of values the 
uh, unique sounds that different places have. I mean, I think I don't think all horn players have to sound the same. Mm, yes, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's it's something. I think it's something to be valued and, and cherished. Just like different accents, different languages, that sort of thing. It would be a very boring world if we all <laughs> if we all sounded the that's, same. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. well uh, Tommy I noticed you you you're also have been very active in chamber music could you talk about how that came to be cuz I don't know how you found the time to do the solo playing and the orchestral playing and then also balance you know a very active chamber music um was that something you did from an early age I yeah when I uh, if I think about yeah I started very actively playing chamber music when when I was studying and it was kind of I'm sorry, I was, I was kind of, at at first, I was more interested in chamber music than than orchestral playing. So I was, mm-hmm. and I wanted to kind of the, the maybe it was the more responsibility and more kind of creative work. So they with the chamber music, you you could mm-hmm. uh, uh, participate more to the musical. Uh, outcome and, and and also do own arrangements and later compositions and stuff so I, it was so i with with like-minded friends uh, we we formed dif- different groups i had woodwind quintet and brass quintet and then later on horn quartet and and i kind of i just was very interested in 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 the also to different role that horn has in in these different combinations and Mm-hmm. kind of the the repertoire and 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 also the demanding uh technically demanding pieces and stuff so i, I that's inspired me a lot so mm-hmm. and maybe at some point i i wanted to do that more professionally but in in finland has so small circles so it's you cannot really kind of go well, as a chamber musician at, not at least as a horn player here so mm-hmm. so the orchestra work is is more steady well it's yeah. it's it's difficult to do anywhere just full time being a full time chamber musician they're on the road a lot just traveling cuz you can't really do enough work in one place to <laughs> to pay all the yes, bills so it, it does involve a lot of traveling um yeah uh, so at 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 the academy did, was there like um did you get coachings or was it more you kind of just formed your own groups was there a, a like a class on chamber music yeah there, there's there's very good it's kind of we we have own chamber music teachers and mm-hmm. and so I, we so when i we first formed the the woodwind quintet and brass quintet we we got kind of special teachers for those mm-hmm. who also help help to a little bit especially i remember the the woodwind quintet started to get quite fast festival gigs and stuff and the, mm-hmm. the teachers also helped a little bit promote and and we we were very active so yeah and they and it's interesting they they yeah so we were we had own lessons with the quintet and, and the teachers were focused in in teaching mm-hmm. the heavy music skills and, and the music mm-hmm. kind of yeah in those pieces so. yeah that's that's excellent yeah i think the first time i encountered your name was with the golden horns with the book that comes with the duets and trios and quartets and there's like a a track that you can play along with it i i bought that and we actually did some of that in my studio um and they really liked it It it's really fun pieces yeah the golden horns was we formed it uh about 2005 so Mm -hmm. and it was we were already all of us were were professionals and mm-hmm. so graduated and and at first and we were all working in in Helsinki and mm-hmm. area and it was in a way it was kind of of course we there there was the ambition to develop as a, as a quartet but then also at the same time a little bit like a like a therapeutic yeah uh, project to to let all the anxieties out out from the system in a way so so yeah. that we wanted to to explore and try try out, out different kind of different crossover things also so for mm-hmm. example playing our, our first gig was in in television in in finland playing with a with a jazz musician mm-hmm. uh, so there was a 
we first gig was we played Bill Withers Lovely Day with a with a kind of guitar singer mm-hmm. and we, we were playing the the background music for so we were the kind of only four horns and, and this singer. Oh that sounds and, really cool. And that was straight straight to television and yeah it was it went well and it worked really well and after that we thought that okay how about how about if we continue with this and, and mm-hmm. so we so the kind of the the pop rock music was from the beginning there and we we mm-hmm. love to do to do the classical stuff horn quarter stuff later on we played Schumann concerts took many times with mm-hmm. in different orchestras in Finland but then also we had this this pop gigs that we played sometimes with drums and and one one of our players Tero Toivonen who is also a teacher in civil academy he he loved to play the electric bass so he oh, okay. often he at some we played as a quartet and then at some point he moved to play the bass and it was kind of so it was this kind of trying out different things and, and having fun that does sound yeah. fun so do you have are there arrangements you have for your group with that have a uh, horn and electric bass yeah so for example in this this play along book you mm-hmm. play uh this there is usually in many pieces he's playing the bass okay himself we have some some pieces that have arranged or composed straight away like that so i had one piece three horns and a bass and okay and, i'll have to go back and check that out because i i have a student who yeah. also plays electric bass i think he would really enjoy doing doing that with the group <laughs> yeah 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 well, some, cool. some of those are kind of we we did it for gigs but not not at all all are not published so uh-huh. it's kind of that's okay. just there yeah so uh, I, I'm, was, I'm I'm guessing then that all of the members of the quartet had an interest in pop music, and so I was going to ask, like, who were your influences in terms of popular music in in growing up in Finland? Yeah, we all, of course, we all had kind of own. I guess I I, I I've been listening. I've always like like seven G's music in a way. So uh-huh. so the like classic rock and and progressive rock and and also soul and funk I, ah. and but then like there he 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 was listening to the different kind of uh, finnish rock bands and and this kind mm-hmm. of so there's and uh, i know that we did some arrangements from jammy rock why the uh, some okay. yeah yeah i've heard of that yeah some of our members he yeah from so in the 90s in, in britain and and so mm-hmm. there's yeah and then also more like uh, some of the members like more like uh, this kind of artistic rock uh-huh. music maybe in in the rock. So it's it's just been and that was good because then we we there was also some d- different angles. So so well, that's so, cool. I mean, it's yeah, like combat. I always tell students: chamber music can be such an outlet for your creativity because you have to make more of the decisions. You know, in an orchestra. Basically, there's one person making the decisions. <laughs> it's the conductor, or maybe yeah. the concert master, but m- usually the conductor is making the decisions for everybody. But in chamber music, it's just the people in the group. No one's telling you what to do. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and it's it's fun to play, and also challenging to play in the orchestra. But I, yeah, I know that many people need that. That's some, also some something else mm-hmm. to to. Yeah, challenge and and for me it's just been this chamber music and other stuffs also. So I need that to balance the just sitting in the orchestra and doing my own right, yeah, own part that I need to play there. So yeah, well, um, what if what, let's talk a little bit about your book playing playing from the core, which I I have that I bought it when it came out. I I'm always interested in new methods that come out, and um, it seems like you have a really unique take on. I mean, there's there's obviously the basic things in your book about breathing and embouchure, and there's some warm up exercises and things. But you, you have a, a unique approach to, uh, you know, one's approach to the body and uh, sort of the the whole balance of of physically playing the horn. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that book came to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that's you know in a way that's 
kind of one of the main things that I've done during during the years and during my current career. So so I studied to become a, I studied to become a Pilates teacher, Pilates in, instructor mm-hmm. um, 17 years ago. And I, I, it was after my graduation, I, I, I thought that I, I needed to, I wasn't happy about my playing technique. And I I'm also uh, had problems with performance anxiety and kind of I was a tightness in my body. And I just mm-hmm. felt that I, I, I need to really... I wanted to study some method really well, and and mm-hmm. then I found Pilates and and studied and started to teach it right away and kind of develop it. And at the same time, I was doing my doctorate in Sibelius Academy, and in my doctorate, I was that was kind of different. I was then uh, studying Louis Francois Dopra's horn mm-hmm. method from the beginning of the nineteenth century, and I was playing romantic music and natural horn and but my my dissertation was about Dopra's method okay and I when I wrote that I wrote that there I also uh there started to become material that kind of wasn't anymore about Dopra's method it was about my own in a way uh-huh. and, and and at some point then I noticed that okay this I have to take this out this is kind of something else this is more pilates and more my own stuff mm-hmm. and i i start to think that if maybe i i, I should write a book write a method mm-hmm. and i i started to kind of create it a little, little by little and it started from the from the pilates text in a way so okay. so to how to apply the pilates method the w- way to use body to horn playing um mm-hmm. Then it took it. I, I took took my time. To, took about ten years to write the the Finnish mm-hmm. uh, version of the method. So that came out in two thousand sixteen, and I. But uh, so the so the the body, how to use body, is is one part of it. And then mm-hmm. for me, as important has been the the mental training, which is my. Uh, approach has been also also through body of course kind of Mm -hmm. body awareness but then also like bit bit like mindfulness so so Mm -hmm. mental training and awareness exercises that have that have kind of combined with the bodily exercises they they have then uh helped the performance anxiety and and also also kind of uh, really changed my my playing technique also and the whole whole approach so to kind of more somatic approach to the playing so that's okay well forgive that, me for for not knowing but I, I i know i've heard of pilates i think most people probably have but if you were yeah. uh explain it to me like i don't know because i don't know what pilates is <laughs> yes very good question yeah so it's it's a body control exercise or my mm-hmm. mind body exercise that's uh, the core the pilates is is to to improve the muscle balance of the body so okay. so that to uh, to activate to find and activate and strengthen the deep muscle groups in our body so okay. for example the deep abdominals deep mm-hmm. uh uh core muscles and then many kind of practice so that uh every movement of the body comes from the core so the, mm-hmm. the which is also anatomically correct but in a way that the core activates always before any movement and 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 then the then my method is basically based also in that that the our breathing and and blowing it kind of starts from the core Mm-hmm. And that's uh, that's anat- anatomically how how it should. But then then we need something. We need special exercise to because usually the usually the everyday life is is in a way too easy. For mm-hmm. our body. We breathe so very we, shallow we, in everyday life. Yeah, yeah. And we we passive it. And what happens is that the the deep uh, like postural muscles they they uh, 
passivate and mm -hmm. weaken, and then our posture comes down and we 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 the spine shortens and, and breathing is more restricted and we so we and and so we in pilates we try to go to the core to the problem so so to strengthen the core and and in that way to free the the breathing and and lengthen the spine and, and improve the posture and mm -hmm. and it just Basically, basically, it starts with with that that we start to activate the core mm -hmm. in, all the time. And same thing we can do also when we play. So yeah, well, and and in that way, it sounds. Uh, I know it's a different method, but it, it, I'm hearing some similarities with Alexander technique or Feldenkrais, um, that sort of thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah they kind of are the same under the same umbrella, which is mm -hmm. the the somatic method. So they are, and it's so that the the Goal is very same as in Alexander technique or Feldenkrais, but the the path is a bit different. Mm -hmm. So, so in your in balance. your study, oh sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so the balanced way of using the body is is the hopefully the same in the end. But it's, yeah, right, and better better use of yourself because we're very inefficient. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and yes. you know, of, yes. of course, as 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 you get older and your body gets older, you become more aware of oh, I can't can't play the instrument the way I used to. And it's, I think that the use of the core and just relying on the breath is, it's so hugely important in brass playing. Cause you, mm. these, these muscles are so small and they get tired as you get older, get tired faster. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, um, in terms of breathing and you, you know, the best thing for anybody listening who's interested is just to go buy your book. Uh, but what, what are some misconceptions about breathing that, uh, you know what? What's like a number one misconception about breathing that you find in in students and and probably professionals as well about breathing and playing the instrument? Yeah, very good question. It's uh, one thing is that that we usually we are we are take the air into to kind of suck the air in when when we play and and when and then it's very tense and shallow and we don't get the air to the bottom of the lungs. So. Mm -hmm. So and and the the breathing if if our posture would be somewhat free and lengthened mm -hmm. the breathing would happen by itself. So mm -hmm. we if we so usually I, I focus when when teaching I focus to the exhalation to really to really empty the lungs and then just to learn to let the air come in and and to open up the back so kind of always and think changing the and all starts by extending the ribcage extending the back mm -hmm. so that goes in by itself and it, it, it's a little bit kind of re relearning but it, it's then you have to breathe in much not not so often and you can say longer phrases then when, when you can you take maybe even less air in, but mm -hmm. deeper, and, and kind of just uh -huh. letting the air in with with the diaphragm. Because right. usually we, if our posture is a little bit uh, off balanced and and there's tightness around the rib cage, our diaphragm cannot work in a free way. So mm -hmm. so then, and the diaphragm would be the the main inspiratory muscle. So we then we are using and so not so efficient. So kind of. Find the uh, uh, to to let the diaphragm more relaxed way, mm -hmm. but but uh, but the thing is that diaphragm needs the deep abdominals to to work in a relaxed way. So because right. otherwise our, our posture collapses. So we need the post deep core muscles, the postural muscles to to support our body, and then the diaphragm can work in a relaxed way. So that's why it's we cannot be totally relaxed when we breathe in. We need to support at the same time, and that's yeah. It's challenging to to find the the support to the deep muscles, and otherwise be very rela relaxed. But that's that's kind of the goal in my method. So right. Well, yeah, and it, it is finding that balance. I mean, you can have a tight core 
and feel like you're taking a deep breath, but really not be taking a breath that's nearly as deep as it could be. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. that's, that's great. Um, Tommy, thank you so much for uh, chatting with me today. I, I feel like we should kind of wrap things up and maybe ch- talk about... Um, you know how you how you got involved with the IHS and and how the International Horn Society has been um, important to you and your career. Yeah, I I, I was uh, yes, I've been member and I'm following how how things are going in calling. Uh, then I I took part of of a couple of uh, symposiums mm-hmm. and. I, Found it very inspiring to, for me, it has been kind of more, more inspiring to meet home players from really from kind of out of Europe in a way. Because we, right, we in the when we are studying, we we get influences from from Middle Europe and, and from Britain and and, but not so much from from, of course, North America is, is we we hear it in in. In, in orchestra concerts and film music and the, mm-hmm. kind of the style. How, I, but then it has been very interesting to to meet players from and teachers from 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 the states and and hear how how their what's the playing style and but then also South America and then Asia and Australia. Yeah. So, so that's the and. As you said earlier, that there's there's not one correct way to sound and play. So the different voices and different cultures, and mm-hmm. that's very interesting and inspiring. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah, and you know, it's um, it is fun to go to these international horn symposiums. And there was one in Finland a while ago, wasn't there? Has there been one? Yeah. It- 2002 there was in in Lahti. Lahti. Yeah, yeah yeah and then there's a there's a brass there's an annual brass festival isn't there the brass there, week. yeah yes Lie- Lieksa brass week that's in in the in the e- e- close to the eastern border so really okay yeah in the which is uh, very inter- interesting it's a small town uh, but there's a same thing. There's a there's a has been a, a very strong wind orchestra mm-hmm. uh, culture there, and then there's been a, it's still going strong. There's uh, well, I, I would I would definitely be interested in in going to a a brass symposium or a horn symposium in Finland sometime. Yeah, let's see. Hopefully, that would <laughs> that would re- require some some organization. It's, it's possibility. It's possibility. Yeah. Well, excellent. Well, Tommy, thanks again for speaking with me today. This has been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for for inviting me to for this interview. Yeah.